what up love the humans my name is Rogaigos, and in this video i want to address something i feel like no one's been addressing in my multi six-figure content strategy so if you want to scale from 10 grand a month upwards of 20 to 30 grand a month this is definitely gonna be the right fit for you if you want to do that with your online coaching business if you're a complete beginner this is definitely not going to be for you if you have no niche no offer you never sold anything you never generated leads in your life Definitely not gonna be the right fit for you. But if you're stuck between three to 10K and it's inconsistent cash flow, and it's a pretty stressful business, and everyone's telling you to post one to three videos on reels every single day, I'm here to tell you you don't need to do that. And I'm gonna show you guys the way I like to think about content so you can implement it into your business. And if you don't know who I am, I weave my story in a lot of different YouTube videos. So for this one, I'm gonna just jump right into it, okay? If you wanna know my content snapshot, it's pretty simple. It consists of three things to actually acquire a client and book a call. The first thing consists of is my culture funnel. In simplified terms, all a culture funnel is, is a location where you can actually DM a lead. So for example, YouTube cannot really be a culture funnel because in order for me to message a lead and a prospect, I need to take them off YouTube and into a different platform. My platform I like to use is Instagram. So I like to pair all my short form content, which is Instagram, Instagram stories, and I like to pair it with a YouTube channel, long form content, and I use it as assets. I'll show you what I mean in a moment to warm up prospects a little bit deeper, get them to build a resonance with me and a little bit of an authority before I actually acquire their phone number, which is through DM setting and then booking them on for a call. My funnel flow is a little different than most people. I like to post content that I know deeply resonates with my dream clients. And when they do that, I also add some call to actions in between my stories like you saw in between my posts. These call to actions will lead into an inbound DM. I'll also DM people who just followed me or engaged with my content. I'm not too persistent on the outbound system. I'm very persistent on my inbound system of building genuine, valuable relationships with people. Another thing I like to do different than most coaches is as opposed to sending them a calendar booking link like most people do, I don't like doing that because... If there's no trust before the funnel and they're, you're asking them to book a call with you, that's way too much obligation, way too much obligation. That's where you get a lot of no-shows. You have to have a really strong funnel. Most people don't have a strong funnel, especially if you're stuck between three to 10K a month. You don't have a strong funnel if you want to get to 20 and 30 right now. Even if your funnel is strong, the conversion process within your funnel has to be on par. So what I like to do for my conversion process is I like to acquire phone numbers first in my DM setting. And when I acquire a phone number, I will then text this person on WhatsApp or iMessage and I'll initiate a phone setting call. Now, the reason why I do that is because phone setting builds a lot of proximity to me. When people hop on the phone with me or they go through all my YouTube content, they start to realize how much of an authority I actually am. And that's the same way I want to position you. And it's also less obligatory. They don't need to book a call, show up on time, dress to impress, hop on a Zoom. You could do this in the pajamas that you're wearing right now and laying down in bed and get all the data you need that you would have gotten on the Zoom and actually disqualify clients that aren't even ready for you. So you don't have to waste your time even hopping on Zoom in the first place. I'm sending a lot of YouTube assets to them in between those times too, a lot of case studies, interviews, results. I'm really solidifying myself and that will also of course end up leading to the sales process where I'm, like I mentioned, it's DM setting and then I'll set them up for a phone setting call. And then I'll immediately, if I can, I'll transition them immediately onto a Zoom or set up an appointment for a Zoom later on in the day leading to a closed deal. Now, this is not the same system I'm plugging to you guys on today's YouTube video, but I just want to share it because I know it works for me. I'm sure it'll help you out too if you understand it. it worked for Evan, Savvy Expat on YouTube. It did 7,500 his first five days with us. It worked for Connor doing 18 grand his first 30 days. Tania doing 12 grand within three months. But now that you understand the actual content ecosystem that goes on into my business, the second piece of this strategy has to do with your dream client psychology. So what do I mean by that? There are three layers to attracting your dream client. The first layer is where you just target their niche. Now, if I just targeted my niche, it means all I'm doing is I'm calling out online coaches. All you're doing is probably just calling out the chiropractors or the dentists, right? The second layer is when a niche goes into being qualified. Now, all of a sudden, I'm talking to online coaches, but I'm talking to online coaches that are stuck between three to 10K a month. Which leads us to our third layer, which is the actual dream clients. And this is where we go from online coaches to online coaches stuck between 30 to 10K a month to online coaches stuck between 3 to 10K a month who are looking to scale to 20 to 30K, who are looking for profit, who are looking for a simple model, something stress free, less than, that's more than. Less than 15 hours a week, 
of work, lean team. I only have a team of one, virtual assistant. Consistent cash flow, high LTV per client, meaning high MRR, monthly recurring revenue. This stuff also applies to values and morals. Like for me, I very much value God and Jesus in my business. I tell everyone on my sales calls that this is God's kingdom and God's business. It's not my kingdom. It's not my money. It's not my business. I also love boxing and I also love nature. So anytime you hear a chicken in the background, it shows you how much I'm in a nature environment. Or if you see boxing in my content, if I tell you I don't want to work with anyone who is a devil, if I tell you I don't want to work with anybody who is just in it for money. Do you guys notice something here? This is the secret to becoming a niche of one. This is where you become a tribe leader. Remember the quote, people don't buy coaching, they buy coaches. No one buys Tesla, they're buying Elon Musk. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. And on top of that too, people do business with people they resonate with. Like if you don't resonate with me, then it's no problem because only I'm going to do business with people I know, like, and trust. And a huge problem in the space is that so many of you guys have been marketing to this. You've been marketing to just the qualified mainly. The next thing I want you to understand is the three layers of desire. When you're handling a dream prospect, you are handling their survival needs, you're handling their thrive, and you're handling their dreams. What do I mean by that? I'll give you an example of this. There's a very big difference if I was, man if I was marketing to people who are trying to start a coaching business versus people who are trying to scale a coaching business, right? So if I was trying to market to the person who's trying to start a coaching business, Big factors that are probably going to go on in their mind right now is freaking confidence. Do they even believe in themselves? It's going to be sales. It's going to be very basic, fundamental stuff that they probably never even really heard of. Creating their first offer, doing basic personal branding, doing basic sales framework. What platforms to use? Is this a scam? <laughs> The next layer of this would be their thrive. I mean, obviously, one day, somehow, some way, they want to do ads or organic marketing at a higher level, and they want to generate more leads to close more deals so they make more money. But that may not be what they're focused on right now. And then the dream is really like, okay, what if I can also too, instead of just getting to a 10K a month, what if I can also get to 30K a month, right? It's a dream. It's in the future, but it's not what they need now. And so this is the example with the start person. But what I want to paint the picture for you guys is I am marketing to this bottom layer. I am marketing to their survival needs. And I'm also noticing that a lot of people in your guys' content, you are marketing to either the wrong person, the wrong client. You're trying to market to this person instead of the person you should be marketing to. Or you guys are marketing to the wrong layer. You're marketing to what they're thriving, what they need in the future. What we should be marketing to because we want to be a painkiller in, in our content, not a vitamin, is we should be marketing to their survival needs. So if we're marketing to the bottom, not the nice to haves, but the stuff that stresses them out and keeps them up at night and afraid. You probably filmed or created a little target audience thing in the past before. If you've ever filled one of those sheets out, you probably got asked that question before. What keeps them up at night? And if you ever heard that question, now you know why we asked that question. If I were to do it again with someone who actually wants to scale their coaching business, let's, let's say for someone who wants to eventually get to 20 to 30K a month, right? That's their dream. Maybe what they're thriving to ev eventually acquire is a team, right? Maybe that's like setters and closers. But as of right now, they're probably at a level where what we have to do is we have to lock down a funnel. We have to lock down ads or an organic strategy for leads. And then we just got to get them more calls, more clients, more cash. Maybe these people are looking for more consistent income. This is the person I'm marketing to. That's you guys. Right? I could go on and on and on about this. But the whole point is I am marketing to this level of where you guys are at. I'm not going to be teaching guys how to hire a team or hire setters and closers right now, but I am going to be making sure that we handle this part in my marketing, which means it's very important. This is the next step that in our dream clients, this is market research. We want to understand their frustrations, 
fears, wants, and desires. It is very important that we understand our dream client's frustrations, fears, wants, and desires so well. Now, the best ways to find their frustrations, their fears, or wants, and desires are review your sales calls that you had with the potential clients or do what I do. What I do is I like to not just review my sales calls, but I also have a survey at the beginning of my onboarding that goes through the list of these questions and literally gets data from the get-go as to what they want, where they're at, what they need, what's hurting them, what they're afraid of. The final thing you can also do is you could do market research and just interview prospects. You don't need to sell them on the sales call. You just interview them in exchange for the value that they provide with this market research. Because the goal here is you want to get this proper data so that you know what you're marketing to. You want to become absolutely obsessed with the psychology of what your dream clients are going through. Because when you understand your prospects at a deep level, at the pain point level, they assume that you automatically have all the answers. And on top of that, it makes your content a dog whistle, means it's attracting the dogs, not the cats, the dogs, the people you're trying to attract your dream clients. And it's not a megaphone, which means that you are speaking out and about loudly to everyone because you have this really cool thing that can help them all. That's not what we're here to do. So recap, lock down the funnel flow. Understand your dream client's psychology. One thing I'll tell you, find topics and keywords that resonate with your dream clients. I'll give you guys an example. Funnels, ads, organic, calls, leads, those all resonate with my clients. But if you wanna know what resonates with my dream clients, it's the doing it in less than 15 hours a week, having a lean team of just one to two. Consistent cash flow is a pretty good keyword, high lifetime value per client. Make a client's duration worth years longer so they stay, keep paying you and refer others to you. That's pretty valuable, monthly recurring revenue per client. Profit, hitting 20, 30 grand in revenue is cool, but imagine if majority of that in all of it is profit. Simple model, it's stress-free. God and Jesus. That's what I mean by also finding your topics and keywords, the things that really match you. And this works in any niche. I showed you guys Tania, which by the way, she's a spiritual and astrology coach making $12,500 a month within three months. Connor, he's a real estate coach. He teaches wholesale and real estate. He made $18,000 in profit his first 30 days with me. Evan, he has an agency helping American retirees relocate to the Philippines. Super random agency I know for a 20-year-old kid. He went from $11,000 a month at his highest in the last 365 days to $7,500 his first week in profit cash collected just working with us. The system works. And it's the alignment with your system that you want to have. I hope that video was helpful for y'all. You have a beautiful, blessed rest of your day. We'll speak soon.